morning, everyone. Morning. Happy New Year to all of you. That was really muted. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Sarah. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you. That's some enthusiasm there. We're going to start our service, get ourselves warmed up with some singing, and we're going to sing number 65, Brightest and Best. 65. <coughs>
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Our collect prayer for today as we celebrate the baptism of Christ. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Grant to us, who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please do be seated as we have our first Bible readings, and um, I'll just I forgot to welcome those who are joining us from home. Welcome to those who are joining digitally. I know we're having some problems with the sound. Stuart's working quite feverishly on it at the front. So I don't even know if you can hear what I'm saying, but if you can, we're working on the sound so you can hear us at home. Thank you, Brenda. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, and have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, and they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I did Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honoured, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for you. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. The response is, The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Ascribe to the Lord your powers of heaven. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. If the God of glory thunders, the Lord is upon the mighty waters. The Lord, Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The voice of the Lord is mighty in operation. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The voice of the Lord breaks the sea of the trees. The Lord breaks the seas of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Syria like a young wild ox. The Lord, the Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The voice of the Lord splits the flash of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak tree thrive and strips the forest bare. In his temple all climb glory. The Lord shall give his people the blessed increase. The Lord sits enthroned above the water flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his blessing. 
the, his people the blessing of peace. The Lord shall give to his people the blessing of peace. The second reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. We're going to sing our next hymn now, so a short hymn, number 613, 613. It's just one verse. We're going to sing it twice, number 613. New Year 
again, 2022, if you can believe it. And a uh, new year is often a time for new things for some people. Uh, if you'll take my advice, I actually think that it's easier to start new things and to, to make resolutions and changes. If you wait a bit, wait until the world seems a little bit less dark and a little bit warmer and the flowers start to come through in the spring. And, you know, from personal experience, I think you're more likely to be able to stick to things if you start in the spring. Because it always feels like it just sucks a little bit too much in January to start new things. However, a new year is very poetically a good time for new starts and new approaches and new changes, trying different things. And um, with that in mind, I found myself remembering probably it was three years ago now in January when, like lots of other people, I went to the gym, because <laughs> that's what you do in January. You go to the gym, usually not for very long after January. And uh, there were lots of other people in there like me who'd either, you know, started for the first time or they'd gone back after not being for a while and they were maybe not used to how different machines worked. And there were two women there who were um, I was stuck in my memory because they were having a great time. They were obviously friends or maybe sisters and they were having a laugh. There was lots of jokes pre-COVID, so there was, there was lots of, you know, sort of laughing and hugging and trying all the different machines together. But they came a little bit um, unstuck when they went to try and use one of the treadmills. And this is a very, it was a very particular kind of treadmill. They use it for CrossFit and it's one that you don't change the speed of it with a button, it sort of gets faster as you get faster and gets slower as you get slower. But they obviously didn't know this because I heard one of them shouting, Sandra, Sandra, it doesn't stop when you stop. It doesn't get slower when you want to go slower. Sandra, it's not getting slower. And she couldn't figure out how to make this treadmill stop. Um, being, you know, a very kind-hearted and compassionate priest, I naturally waited to see if it would get funnier, <laughs> rather than going to help. She was okay actually, her friend was with her, but she could not figure out how to make it go slower. And what she ended up doing was grabbing hold of the railings either side of the treadmill and sort of levering herself up on the railings and suspending herself over the treadmill until it slowed down enough for her to sort of start a quick walking pace again, because it got a little bit out of control. <laughs> um, they have stuck in my mind because, well, it was quite memorable, to be honest. They, um, they were having a good time, but they have made these choices and it had not perhaps quite turned out the way that they imagined. And that is often the way it is in life. The choices that we make have some unexpected consequences. We don't quite see how things are going to turn out in the end. However, in our Gospel reading today, Jesus makes a choice to be very publicly baptised by his cousin, by John, in the River Jordan. And he does know how this choice is going to turn out. He knows that it's going to lead him, eventually, down a very difficult road. He knows it will lead to those he's called his friends, his disciples, those he trusts, abandoning him and claiming they've never known him. He knows it's going to lead to him being tortured to his death on the cross. And he knows that there's a very difficult path ahead of him. He also knows what comes after. He also knows that it's going to lead to new life, new hope for all people who follow him. So he knows what he's doing when he sets out. He's been very public, announcing, here he is. He's starting something very new. I'm the one that John's told you about. And the Holy Spirit confirms this on the day when he's baptised. However, the people that were around him would not have known what his choice was going to lead to. And I think it's fair to say they probably were imagining that something quite different was going to come out of this. They were seeing that he was a new rabbi starting something new. And this is very, very early days. He's not really been teaching and preaching very publicly yet until this point. But here's a new rabbi who's talking about things a little bit differently. He's talking with a new authority. And perhaps they were hoping that maybe this could be the time they could finally overthrow the Romans, that they could rule themselves again. 
Perhaps they were seeing this as the start of a revolution. Maybe, yes, someone who could be their king rather than Herod, someone who could bring in real change. And they wouldn't have been picturing the end that Jesus knew was coming. However, by the time we get to our New Testament reading today, this takes place probably just a few short months after Jesus' resurrection and after that first pouring out of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And by this time, Jesus' choices, his decisions, were starting to make more sense to them. Things were starting to come clearer. But there's still a bit of a sense that, and we all feel this way too quite often, that they were feeling their way, that they were still trying to discern what God's will was, what choices they should be making. And if you read a little bit later in Acts, later on there's some quite spectacular arguments between Peter and Paul in particular, who have very different ideas about what they should do with God's good news. Should they be taking it out everywhere? Should they be keeping it just for their own Jewish community? Some big arguments ahead. But at this point, Peter and John hear that people in Samaria, who would have been their natural enemies, people they don't normally associate with, people they certainly didn't have very high views of, were following Christ. They were becoming what was starting to be called Christians. They were starting their own church. And they made a very conscious choice to go with this, to see what happens. There is a sense that, like that treadmill that my friends at the gym were on, it was gathering momentum and things were starting to go faster and faster and they were wondering where this was going. And they made the decision to pray for the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the blessing of God on people who were very different to them, who they would not normally have associated with. And that's something for us to bear in mind. They prayed for those who were very different to them and welcomed them into God's family. Sometimes our choices have quite obvious outcomes. Sometimes things are more subtle. Sometimes we don't really get to see the outcome of our choices. Maybe we get a glimpse of it, but sometimes we don't. And at the moment, it often feels, I think, a little bit hard to know what the right choice is in terms of, um, I don't know, socialising with people, um, the way you wear a mask and not, and there's a sense that things have improved a lot from um, the pandemic from last year, but there's still a bit of a way to go, and there's a lot of anxiety still around, some uncertainty, and a sort of sense of waiting still. And so I was actually really pleased to see these words from Isaiah, that was set for today. And I'm just going to slightly. Um, it says, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, says the Lord. I have called you by name, you are mine. And the rest of it is very beautiful as well. I encourage you to read it again to yourselves later on. But it's a reminder for us that in the midst of what often seems, even without COVID, like a very out of control world, that God is with us. That in the midst of all that we're anxious about, God is with us. That he's called each and every one of us by name. That we all belong to him. We're all part of God's loving family. No matter what we're facing, God says, do not be afraid. For I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, and you are mine. And even in those moments when, like my treadmill friends, you feel like you're just simply hanging on for the ride and waiting until things have slowed down a little bit more and you can perhaps join in again, it's a reminder that God is with us no matter what we're facing. And as we enter 2022, these first few days of a new year, I think it's good for us to pray for courage to share God's word, his hope, with people who we might not normally associate with, to, to think what that means, to pray for strength when we feel weak, we've all struggled at times in these last two years, 
to pray for peace for us in our anxiety, for peace for the world as well, and to pray for God's hope that, that shines within us and shines from us as a church as well. And I think it's fitting as well that we continue to pray that God will surprise us with how he's at work in us and around us as well. If you feel able to, would you like to stand with me as we declare our faith in the Creed on page 5? <coughs> Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of our faith, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnated from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sakes he was crucified and the Pontius Pilate. He suffered the death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in one glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated as we pray together. <coughs> Gracious God, we thank you for this new year. We pray for those who've already stood alongside us in our struggles. And we ask for your guidance as we look ahead. Keep us open always to the new and surprising ways that you are at work around us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Pray for all those we know who are not well today. We pray for those who've asked prayers by name, for Anne, Christine, Roland, Catherine, Neil and Patricia, Malcolm, Janet, Bina, Charlie and Charity. We ask, Lord, for your healing, for your peace as well, for everyone who's anxious about their health, all the help of a loved one. And we continue to ask for your blessing on our very overworked NHS. Lord, in your mercy, hear me our help. We remember those who have died, and we pray for all those who are grieving for them, for those preparing for funerals at the moment, and those who simply find that their grief is raw today. We ask, Lord, for your light to shine on them, to lift the burden of grief from their shoulders a little, to allow them to go about the day, to be with friends, with those who can bring comfort. 
We pray particularly for the family and friends of Jack Emery. And for everyone who's grieving, Lord, we pray for your peace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear your prayer. Lord, we pray for our world, for many challenges it's facing in the midst of the pandemic. We pray for all those struggling, both with their health and also those who are struggling economically, whose work, whose businesses have been affected by the pandemic. We pray for the sadly growing number of people whose mental health has been affected by the pandemic in lots of ways for all those who are struggling. We pray that people know that there are ways they can reach out, that they do not need to struggle alone. There are many people happy to listen and who will be able to understand a little of what they're experiencing. We pray for other situations which don't always reach the news that we read and hear, for those struggling after natural disasters from fires and floods, where crops have failed, where other diseases, not just COVID, are running rampant. We pray, Lord, that countries would be willing to allow in uh, qualified medical professionals with medicine that's very desperately needed. And in all places where there's been disaster, we pray that aid can reach the ones who do truly need it. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our schools locally, Lord, and around the country. Here we pray particularly for Methley Primary, for Brickshaw uh, Secondary School, and for Roy's High School as well. As children and young people return to school and to education in the midst of some, some new rules and a little trepidation about the spread of COVID, we pray for the teaching staff and all the assistants and other staff who work there for safety and for peace of mind for them and for those children and young people returning who are anxious about what they're returning to and anxious about their futures, Lord, we pray for hope. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we pray for our church here in Methley and for the churches across the rest of our team as well, Hilton Woodlesford, Lofthouse and Rothwell. Help us, Lord, to always be ready to extend a welcome to those who would like to hear more about you. Help us to be ready, Lord, to speak of your hope, to speak of your forgiveness and also of the challenges that you bring us. Lord, we ask that we can be a light shining in the darkness and that we do all this through your strength. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. If you're able to, would you like to stand for the peace? <laughs> Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Let's offer each other a government approved sign of God's <laughs> peace. With a wave or an elbow or a fist bump, whichever you're comfortable with. Peace to you all, peace to you all. Peace everyone, peace everyone at home as well. <coughs> and once we share the peace, we're going to sing again. And this time it's number 189. 189. God is working his purpose out. 189.
Christ our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. It's on page 8 in our books. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right to give thanks to the Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, who lived on earth and went about among us, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life, so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks for by the leading of a star you revealed your only Son to the world, that in following him we are led from darkness into this marvellous light. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sabbath and Christ. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sabbath and Christ. Please do be seated. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, <clears throat> broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave it thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Oswald, St. Margaret, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Jesus is 
is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not have to be to come to this your table, the mercy of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but it is in your hand of all your great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather and come and sit on your table, for you are the same Lord. Our souls wash through this most precious blood, and that we 
So let us pray. Lord, of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us over. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and then opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body, share his risen life. We who bring it to your help, bring life to others. We who the Spirit lies in the eyes of the world. Keep us firm in the hope that we have set before us, so we and your children shall be free. And the whole earth will live to the grace of men. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God, who we were born in the Spirit of heaven, make us one in heart and mind, make us one in love, humble, caring, selfless, sharing. Spirit of God, fill our lives with your purpose and love. Amen. Amen. <coughs> You should all have had the link, but if you haven't, please let me know. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who helped with the coffee morning yesterday. I would like you to know that we raised £91 and six pence, which goes towards the expenses of the church. So very many thanks to all of you who put a lot of time into baking and to serving people yesterday. I think that's it. Oh, I'm so sorry. There is no coffee or tea this morning. Um, I think we might just give it a miss for a couple of weeks, but we will start again. And uh, I'd be very grateful to anybody who feels they would like to go on the road to, to do that, to see me when they can. Thank you. Yeah, it will be back again soon, just while there's quite a lot of COVID around in the village at the moment, it seems. We'll just perhaps not gather together in clusters <laughs> without our masks on, just for a couple more weeks, maybe. But it'll be back soon. Thanks to all those who've already been on the road to, for serving the refreshments. I'm really, really grateful. I want to say thank you to Anne as well for conducting the service last week here and at St. John's as well. And um, it's yeah, I really appreciate it because it meant that I could go and visit some family and a couple of friends who I've not actually seen since before the pandemic started with Anthea, so that was really good. To be honest, we weren't totally sure we'd be able to go. We were all expecting something from Boris, but no, we suddenly realised the day before we better pack <laughs> so that we could still go. So I'm really grateful to Anne for conducting the service last week. Thank you. Um, I don't think I've got a lot more to say at the moment. Just um, keep in mind that we do have coming up a special service with the Methodists. It's not next Sunday, it's the week after, the 23rd. And it's, it's always been a joint service, but we're, there's a bit of uncertainty this year about how to do it and how to manage it safely. So we'll, we'll know by next week what is happening and we will let you know. But it, it's in two weeks' time, that special service with the Methodists. And we've also got Messy Church coming up next Sunday afternoon at 3.30. And big thanks to everyone who organises Messy Church and who runs it as well. It's always open to new volunteers if you want to come along and give it a go. You're really welcome. Just to be honest, one or two extra volunteers would make it easier for everybody as it would mean that people could 
share out a little bit more when they were there and when they weren't and perhaps make it a bit of a less of a burden. So if, if you are interested and you just want to try it and see how you feel, just come and have a chat with me or with Anne and we'll talk to you about it and let you know kind of what to expect. Um, you're welcome to come along and just try it and see what you think. I think that's everything for now really. Yeah, I don't think we need to. Anything else I've forgotten I can do? I think that's everything for now. So let's sing our final hymn. This is number 204. 204, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. 204. Peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.